from 1939 until 1952, Winchester produced a semi-automatic 22 rifle called the Model 74. It was actually designed in the early 1900s. This particular uh, firearm we're going to look at today is in the second to last year of production, 1951. It is 22 long rifle only, and uh, we're going to take a good look today and as well, uh, of course, shoot it. Well, hey guys, it's DR Drake 63 here again. Going to take a look at a uh, an oldie but a goodie. You might say, what the heck's this hole in the side? Well, that's uh, that's how you load up to 14 rounds of 22 long rifle into a Winchester 74. A magazine tube that uh, goes in the back. So basically you've got the tube, you've got a charging handle that's at the, at the very rear. An ejection port and there you go this one's in okay shape I had given some thought when I first got it do I want to refinish the stock and I thought yeah it's got uh, it's got a few spots on it that we want to control that rust but I certainly wouldn't wouldn't want to re-blue it or anything like that one of the things about this that uh, really makes for a challenge is that sight picture pretty tough that's one small front sight there especially when you're lining it up through the rear now this would be a great peep sight gun and they did make versions of this uh, where a peep sight might be attached to the rear if you're going to scope this there are no pre-mounted drilled or tapped holes for a scope, so you'd have to do that. I'm not gonna do that on this firearm. Interesting feature. Uh, that's your safety right here. Safe is in this mode, fire is in this mode. And uh, I have read that you do not want to charge the rifle pull back on that cocking lever while it's in the safe mode because you might do some damage but quite an interesting firearm and uh, we're going to take a closer look at it this one's from 1951 and even though this is kind of a cheap you know your receivers a tube which is a very cheap way to make a receiver um, even though it's cheap still quality and after all these years has the has the ability to uh, to still function flawlessly doesn't seem too picky on ammo here's an interesting bit of history about this rifle in the early days of World War II during the Len lease act uh, we sent silenced and scoped versions of the Winchester 74 to the Brits uh, their SOE used them. They were also planning on using them, if necessary, for island defense. Takedown on this is very simple. First thing you want to do is you want to take your magazine tube out. Give you a closer look at how all that works. Nice metal butt plate in pretty pretty decent condition. And then uh, everything you need to do to take this stock off of the receiver in the barrel is right here, one screw. Screws into a, a lug. Like I said, it's a captive screw. And you just basically lift this right off the receiver. And here you can see what you have here. And then here's your, here's your assembly, everything uh, like I said, your takedown screw goes into this lug, which is drifted into the barrel, dovetail joint. And I actually cleaned this yesterday, so I'm not going to get into a complete takedown or anything. But what you see right here 
is this is your feed ramp. That tube I just showed you in the stock marries up right here, and that becomes your feed ramp. And I'll, uh, I'll show you a little bit better close-up view in a second of that. But basically all you need to do to take this down or take the bolt out as a one-piece assembly uh, is you, you see this button right here. You push that through like so. And now your bolt assembly will come right out. And it is highly recommended that you wrap around this charging handle because it's just held in, in place in this rear portion of your bolt assembly by a little hook. And if that comes off, you're going to have springs and parts flying, which I'm not interested in. So what you see there, that little squared off portion that's illuminated, that is your feed ramp. And that funnels the funnels the ammo into your bore right there. Pretty simple design. Now that part comes off by drifting out this pin right here, and then this this whole unit comes off. I actually took that out yesterday. Now don't have a need to do it again, but it it's like I said, you drift this pin out, that piece comes out, and I was able to get in there with a brush and clean it really well. Um, outside of that, you see, uh, looking in there, you see, um, your ejector. It's fairly simple, simple mechanism. And then this part right here is basically the hammer portion of, of your trigger, your sear and so forth. And as we showed you already, safe fire kind of unique type type of setup and again it's recommended that uh, you don't you don't charge it in the in the safe position so i don't really see a, much of a need to use any safety on that that's just me but uh as as mentioned this rear sight very small my eyes definitely don't like it it's not easy to get a sight picture and you'll see from the shooting videos that uh, I wasn't getting the best hits, but I don't think it was because of uh, the rifle. And here you can see some rust. No pitting or anything like that, but just, just a scenario, a little bit of steel will and some oil, and we get that under control. Not, uh, not a real big deal. But uh, overall, it uh, appears to be in very good shape. Now, looking at this bolt... I mentioned earlier that you don't want to have that little hook right there come out of uh, that indentation. Otherwise, these, these springs, one of which holds the firing pin, is going to go flying. Um, a little bit tempted. I mean, this is a rough-looking bolt, and, and I doubt if it was ever shiny polished. I, I can tell by looking at the machining that it wasn't. Uh, some guys would want to spend a lot of time making this all shiny and new. Uh, that's something that's not really a focus for me. I want to make sure the parts, the moving parts, are properly cleaned and lubed. And you can see what those are. And I also mentioned to you uh, the firing pin. There that is right there. You see it moving back and forth. And uh, if you dry fire this, which you want to avoid... Uh, it's going to beat that up and even bend it. And if you take a real close look, it's maybe possibly a little bit bent. Uh, it works though. So if, you know, my old man used to say, if it don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's nice to know what the scenario is with that. But that goes all the way back as far as you can see in my hand. You can see a little bit better angle here. You see how that's bent up a little bit? Like I said, it's fully functioning. Uh, but uh, you dry fire this thing too much, you're going to beat that up. And you, you can work it back into shape.
and just because of my concerns with dry fire in this, I'm going to forego the, the typical uh, trigger weight pull tests that I do. Uh, however, I would have to say this trigger uh, doesn't have very much creep at all, and I'd probably throw it into the somewhere five, five and a half pound category. Uh, but it's it's an easy pull. Might be a little bit lighter, but like I said, I just uh, don't want to try stuffing that spent 22 round in there and um, uh, to do this test. And I'm not going to dry fire it, not on purpose. So this is certainly not the fastest way to load a, a 22, certainly not compared to uh, modern magazines and things of that nature, but uh, uh, it works pretty well. It's a different approach than the, the tube that you load and, and mount in the front of the barrel. But uh, I think it's kind of an interesting system, kind of cool. I know like the Browning semi-automatic rifle still made today use that. I mentioned the, the trigger uh, was very nice, not a lot of creep or travel to it, and uh, so no issues from that standpoint uh, obtaining accuracy. The issues I had obtaining accuracy were just uh, a very small sight picture, and uh, I wear corrective uh, glasses, and so I kind of don't get to see everything that I want to see at once, but you can kind of see I fooled around with elevation and got to the point where I could get groups like this at 25 yards. So certainly not bad, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to compete with a scoped rifle either. Now, one of the things I want to be careful to do with this, uh, with this rifle is lacking a bolt hold open. I want to make sure that um, I'm not dry firing this on the last shot, so I'm going to be careful to count. I've got this loaded up with 14 rounds, and uh, the name of the game here, it's minus eight. Probably kind of a silly test to say, hey, this is the, the, the ultimate decider of what's a good semi-auto, but hey, last week we took that uh, Marlin 60 out and shot it in minus one or minus two. Uh, the Winchester 70 four says hold my beer we're going to show you what we can do at minus eight uh, for a firearm that's 70 years old so let's see and i did it anyway i got so quick on pulling the trigger i dry fired the damn thing uh, which is what you don't want to do. But uh, function on this is great. I've already cleaned it up, um, you know, per the, per the takedown portion of this video. You'll see uh, how easy it is to do that. But uh, very handy rifle, very handy rifle. I don't consider this a heavy rifle uh, at all. Uh, some do. It's, it's a grown-up size uh, type rifle that has the longer barrel. Nice wooden stock, and uh, I'd have to say, very pleased with the function here. Now, now maybe a better ultimate test of how this rifle does is using a round that's giving me fits with most of my semi-autos, and it's this Winchester right here. And uh, it has kind of a, a squared off nose, which I think can cause some feeding problems. Uh, at least I believe that to be the case. You can kind of see right here and um, you know the feed ramp either likes it or it doesn't so uh, let's see what happens there one thing i really like about this particular uh, firearm is the position of your charging handle i mean you can literally just cock it with your thumb and there you go but let's see how this does And guess what? One round, already having problems, go figure. Um, I'm gonna have to quit using this stuff. And I did count that time. 
last round eject here you go so um you know it was just the first one that got hung up maybe i didn't uh pull that charging handle back and let it let it slam shut enough that might be part of it as well but uh it dawns on me um of all the firearms I've ever owned, and we're talking north of uh, 170, and of all the ones I've ever reviewed, this is only the second Winchester ever. The other one was uh, the 1959 Model 70. So I find that kind of interesting. Uh, an iconic manufacturer who's put out a ton of stuff, and there are other Winchester models I'd love to get my hands on and review, but uh, really enjoy these type of, of rifles, these older ones, the design is good. It's not perfect. This, at the time it was manufactured, and even still today, is one of the less expensive ones you can get. Just such a cool design. I'd have to say that if you, uh, if you are into collecting, shooting, and I'm more of a shooter than I am a collector, uh, old firearms or older firearms back when quality and quality control and precision machining and everything was at the forefront. Um, 22s are a nice way to go, guys. They're still relatively cheap to shoot, although that price of the ammo and scarcity is an issue these days. But in addition to that, they don't typically don't cost as much. We're chilly. It's eight below. And uh, I've given you about as much of my body temp as I'm gonna today. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Iconic firearm, kinda. They made about 400 or so thousand of these. Uh, so this definitely isn't uh, one of the all time best sellers, but like most stuff made this one in the early 50s, they did it right. This is DR Drake 63 saying so long guys, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.